That's uh, some good stuff. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> Most of you guys know that um, I, I usually do a, a leadership retreat annually, and I leave the state and in March, and I go to Florida because that is the best place to go to a conference in March is Florida. Uh, this year, it wasn't... Uh, uh, I just... It, I didn't feel like that's what God wanted me to do, so I, uh, I, was, I was online looking to uh, see what else is available, and uh, I noticed that uh, for uh, thousands of dollars, I could bring a conference right here to Great Falls, Montana, uh, uh, streaming with uh, uh, LeaderCast um, that uh, uh, Chick-fil-A, the owner of Chick-fil-A, and uh, um, John Maxwell put together. Uh, they put together a leadership conference uh, annually, and it's a one-day event. If you go to Atlanta, Georgia, it's going to cost you a few hundred bucks, and it's going to cost you another few hundred bucks to get there, and a few hundred, another hundred bucks to spend the night. So it's going to cost you a few thousand bucks to do this. Uh, I thought, what a better way to uh, impact our community, and really, you guys. Uh, Josh and I and Brian, we meet every Thursday at uh, 10 a.m. and do a staff meeting, and uh, they both said, wouldn't it be great if we had more leaders at The Rock? You know, a church full of leaders, because the mantra of a leader is follow me. Uh, no doubt, uh, uh, Richie Capan is a leader, a strong leader for autism. And all you had to do is listen to his short testimony uh, this morning on the, uh, on the video. And uh, the idea is, he says, I want as many people to follow me this Friday to check out autism. And then to financially put, your, put some money there and, uh, so we can have more awareness of what's going on. Um, and, I, and, uh, and we go, man, wouldn't it be great if everybody here at The Rock were, were leaders? Uh, Zach and Amanda Poole sitting back there, uh, just been here for a month or so, have already stepped up and said, we want to minister to the poor. They go to the railroad tracks uh, over there by Central Avenue West where a lot of the uh, transients hang out, and they've brought them food. Uh, they are already active in ministering to people in need. And uh, so they're, they're putting the, something together. They're already leaders. They're putting something together to say, listen, if you want to help out at the banquet uh, this weekend for uh, uh, next week for the uh, uh, rescue mission, see them. They're going to be back at the cornerstone table. See them. Step up to the plate. Do something. Be a leader. But at the same time, we need to know how to lead. We really do. We need to, you need to take that gift of leadership And you need to go, how can I be better at it? Because we're not all that great. I continually listen to uh, uh, leadership tapes, CDs. I read books. And uh, all truth is God's truth. All truth is God's truth. And we can find little tidbits of how we can be a better men and women, how we can better serve our community. How can we just be better all together? Um, I'm going to show you a little clip. And these clips are on, on, on our website. Uh, and listen, if there's a problem with the web, website, call Brian and chew him out. Uh, I do. I go, Brian, what is with the website? And this is usually his response. I knew you were going to ask. And I don't know. But I'm trying to figure it out. Um, so sometimes he already knows, but sometimes he doesn't. Uh, but don't, don't chew him out. Ah, go ahead. Chew, why not? Anyways, uh, so he has put all this stuff on that we get from LeaderCast. And uh, this is a commander, a uh, retired commander with the Navy SEALs. And I, I, I watched it this morning. And uh, Brian goes, have you watched it yet? I go, oh, shoot, no. And, uh, and so I watched this this morning. And it's three minutes. I go, that was worth 80 bucks. So before you leave, we want to collect 80 bucks from everybody. The conference is 80 bucks. One day, May 8th, 80 bucks. If you can't invest 80 bucks in yourself, you got some serious problems. Okay? Um, it's 80 bucks. So uh, you, we're, we're going to show clips every probably uh, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday till it happens. So, Al, and if we can get the lights, Al, if you want to show that clip, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Some of the most basic lessons I learned in the military translate well into being a leader worth following. Don't forget nothing. Take care of your gear, it will take care of you. Aim small, miss small. 
One of my all-time favorites is to constantly improve your position. It is as simple as it sounds. When we teach new warriors the basics, we focus on skill craft that is designed to save lives. One of the great phrases we had in the SEAL teams was that all of our lessons are written in blood. Someone has failed, been injured, or killed, and therefore we need to learn and adjust our tactics, techniques, and procedures to avoid future calamity. So warriors pass down tried and true lessons that must be learned and exercised by each new trainee. Take a basic patrol. A patrol is what we call in the military a group of soldiers moving from point A to point B in the tactical environment. There are so many skills to learn about patrolling that I could talk about them all day, but one in particular I remember vividly from a ranger school instructor. Patrols are constantly starting and stopping, advancing and pausing to achieve their intended purpose. We stop for all sorts of reasons, to check the map, to ensure we're not being followed or detected, and to simply take a break. I remember the first time I was on a training patrol at ranger school, and we stopped in the middle of the woods. All of us just stood where we stopped. It only took about four seconds for the lead ranger instructor to lose his mind and start yelling. Do you know who gets shot on the battlefield? The tallest, you idiots. Get down, get low, make yourselves small. We did, and in a hurry. He wasn't done. I had taken a knee about five feet from a big, beautiful, evergreen pine tree. He walked casually over to me and asked, why in the hell would you stop right here on a knee in the open when your arms reach away from a tree God made that no bullet from any enemy we have ever faced could cut through? You don't have the sense that God gave a goat. Now, I've seen goats do some very clever things, but I thought that it might not be best to share that. The very next patrol, I was ready. I moved to a tree as soon as we halted. Yet, not three feet beyond the tree was an enormous boulder. Guess who was standing right above me with a disappointed look in his eye? Ranger, we are going to make a warrior out of you yet. Why would you take a spot behind this tree when there is a rock that no weapon could damage, including nuclear ordnance, that is offered to you? The embarrassment only lasted a minute or so. The lesson will last forever. Get creative in how you improve your position. Leverage new technologies. Cut meetings shorter in order to give yourself more time. Come up with incentive and reward programs for your team's performance. Move your office to an eastern facing position if you're an early riser to take in the sunrise. Move it to the west if you stay late and enjoy a sunset. There are infinite ways to achieve this goal and you're only bound by your imagination. Make a note on your desk, small enough not to overwhelm, but big enough to see, that reminds you of this simple concept constantly improve your position. It's a gift you can give your organization and yourself. So I, I, uh, I hope you guys will spend 80 bucks. I hope you'll show up uh, and you won't get in for free. I just want you to know. I, I really do. Don't come and go, oh, well, Pastor, I come here. I go, I don't care. Uh, I will say that there's a part of me that is just like, you know, I see people can spend money on all kinds of foolish things. And uh, so uh, we would love for you to come. Uh, always improve your position. Isn't that just a great statement? Uh, you know, Brian, uh, infantry with the Army, uh, he understands that much more so than I do. Um, uh, I understand it in a uh, athletic way, playing college basketball and soccer and baseball. Uh, having the right angle on your uh, opponent and being in the right spot, learning how to play without a ball, without the ball moving where you're supposed to be. I, 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 I do understand that, <clears throat> but I've never been shot at doing it. And in the military, that's, you know, it's, it's life or death. You, you actually get shot at. Um, and when he said the, the life lessons they learned are, are, are in blood, the way I approach sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, teaching this thing called the Bible, and, and what it means to me is, is it, it, it is the game of life. And I do believe there is an end game, and the end game, I believe, is eternity. And I believe that eternity is either rejoicing in heaven with God, friends and family who love God and have crossed the line of faith, or spend an eternity in the Acts of the Apostle where the 
maggot, the worm is never satisfied and your flesh continually dies and the maggots continually eat. And it's tormenting for eternity. And there are no do-overs. So I think the end game that you and I present to our friends and family is eternal. But as I said last week, I said God did not just die on a cross, be beat beyond recognition, shed his blood, not just for eternity, I said, but it's so that you and I can have life. So that the few short years we get to hang out here with friends and family, the few short years you get to lead people to a better understanding of God's wisdom and God's grace, to meet the needs of poor, to share grace and love with someone that needs grace and love. That's, that's what it's about. It's about life. And then I talked about honor. God, God said, I want you to live an honorable life, and I want you to live a holy life. Well, you know, how do we do that? It's, it's amazing. I have met many people who have crossed the line of faith, and yet they don't really want to know what this says. They, they, they go, oh, I'm going to spend eternity with God. I'm positive of that. I understand his promise, but I really don't want to do anything else I still want to color outside the lines you guys on Wednesdays that show up on Wednesdays you heard me say about a single of Christians so many single Christians they they avoid what the word of God says they say well I'm gonna I want to go out and have sex anyways I don't care if it's gonna mess up my trust issues I don't care what the Bible says about premarital sex and of course then it even before that in high school you know one of the greatest challenges as a youth pastor is is maybe the kids aren't uh, smoking dope, drinking like fish, shooting up, but they just go out and they have, you know, sex with anybody they want. And now it, it's, uh, I'm dealing with, uh, it, it's in junior high. And, and it's, all, it's all about values. The value of their own flesh and blood, their own flesh. They don't care about that. They just, they just, want to have that instant rush for a short time, that gratification. And my goodness, it starts so much younger than it did before. And really, they never improve their situation. They're not moving ahead. They're staying in place or they're going backwards. And you know when you're coasting in life, you're always going backwards. You're not going forward. We... uh, for you guys that have been here, we've, we've, uh, uh, we're doing our best to work our way through the whole Bible. And um, I would love you, if you have your Bible, I'd like you to turn to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32. And Moses is just about to, to be done, uh, gives us his death. And uh, uh, he gives uh, uh, Joshua just a few instructions about how to lead, how to do life. And he says this in Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm going to read verses 44 through 47. It says this. So Moses came with Joshua, son of Nun, and recited all the words of this song to the people. When Moses had finished reciting all these words to the people of Israel, he added, Take to heart all all the words of warning I have given you today. Pass them on as a command to your children, so they will obey every word of these instructions. Now, I mean, they did, you know... We understand that the Hebrew language gave us verbs and and uh, uh, consonants and adjectives and and really helped us have the written word, written writing, and uh, but not everybody had that. And so, you know, Moses is telling Joshua, Joshua, everybody, you, you need to tell your kids this. You know how your sons and daughters learn. It's you. They are mirror images of you. People come up to me who know my son, Matthew, and they go, he's just like you. I go, no, he's not. He's like his mom. They laugh. They go, no, no, he's nothing. He's just like you. I'm no. Because we always go, oh, man, <laughs> poor boy. Sorry, son. But then I say, yeah, hey, he's going to be blessed. But th- that's the way it is. And, and God says, listen, for you guys that have kids, tell your kids about God. Tell them that this here, this instruction manual you guys hear me call this the Chilton's Manual for Life, and, and years ago, my wife finally said, honey, what is a Chilton's Manual? And I go, goodness gracious, you don't know. I, I felt so bad because 
I've been a motorhead my whole life, and a Chilton's manual is gives you instructions on how to work on engines, cars, and and so I've always had them. And uh, it wasn't, but 10, 15 years ago, I go, that's what the Bible is. You know, the Bible gives counsel, gives instructions. Now, most men, if you're a man, raise your hand. And some of you guys aren't sure. I, I'm. We can. We have meetings for that later. How many of you guys have ever put a, a Christmas present together that needed instructions but did, did not need instructions? Yeah, now you know you're a man. That's right. You get that bicycle, that whatnot, what have you, for your son or daughter for Christmas, and you open up the box, and there's bits and pieces everywhere, and your wife goes, honey, why don't you read the instructions? You go, and you try to put that thing together, and you're like, mm, eh, eh, eh. then when everybody goes to bed, you sneak out of bed, and you turn on a flashlight, and you get the instruction, and go, what the foul filth happened here? You know, if we follow the instructions the first time, usually it wouldn't break, it would go together smoothly, and everything works. Well, that's the Word of God. The Word of God is our instructions for life. You know, and as a Christian counselor, you know, people come to me and, I don't just give them some verse instantly. Well, this is what the Bible says. See you later. Bye-bye. Because it's so much harder than that. You know. Um, That's why we should know it. Because this is what it says uh, in verse 37, why these instructions are, are so important. He says, these instructions are not empty words. They are your life. By obeying them, you will enjoy a long life in the land you will occupy when you cross the Jordan River. See, this is, the word of God is, is life. I've recently had a, a friend read the Bible. Uh, and he just read it, and uh, he calls me on the phone. He goes, Ken, man, this is just some bizarre stuff. And he's asking me questions about some of the stuff in the Bible. He goes, man, it, I, it just got humanity all over it. I go, and I, and I just go, well, you know, if you read the Bible as literature and you don't understand that it is a personal letter to humanity and you haven't put your trust in God the Father through his son, Jesus Christ, it can be kind of confusing. And I go, even when I read it, some of the bizarre stuff that happened in the Old Testament, I go, man, that's some bizarre stuff. You know, and then I read the apocalypse and things that God is going to do in the future. I go, that's even crazier sometimes. But then I go, who wants a normal God? One that I can understand. I can't understand. Can I hang a star in the heavens? No. No, that's, God is God and I am not. And so God gives us counsel. I want you to think of the word of God. This is a counselor to you. You know, we, uh, th- this, this can be your accountability person. People go, oh, Ken, I need somebody to be accountable to. I go, you're a grown person. You haven't figured out what was right and what was wrong? What are you, stupid? Well, you know, I just need you to let me know. I go, my goodness. And, and if you're a Christian, the Holy Ghost, as soon as you step out of bounds, the Holy Ghost goes, blows a whistle, <laughs> foul. You stepped out of bounds. But you don't want to hear it. I, I want to step out of bounds anyways because I don't want to follow the manual for life. I want to screw mine up as far as I can. So, this is the word of God. This is your counselor. It gives you life. Uh, turn over to uh, Psalms 119. This is uh, the longest, longest chapter in all the Bible, Psalms 119. You should memorize it, and if you do, let me know, because you are sharp. Psalms 119, fantastic chapter in the Psalms, verse, uh, uh, verse 11. It says, Psalms 119, says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I have treasured your word. You know, How many Christ followers do you know treasure this? Know it. A friend of mine, probably 10 years my senior now, still is. His name is Charlie Dittmar. He flew gunships in Vietnam. 
And he said, when we flew gunships, one of our training things is uh, we had, uh, 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 our jumpsuit had multiple pockets in it. And in these pockets, there were all kinds of different uh, ordinances and things that would, I would do. And if I touched a certain pocket, I knew exactly what I would do. And then, then of course, on his gunship, when he moved his head, his helmet would turn. And, and he could think, and his guns would fire. And he said, I realized that if we were ever shot down, we were hated the most out of all the military. He says, but now I'm going to translate that, Ken, into what it means to be a man of God. And he goes, I understand what it means to understand the Bible and to memorize the Bible. He goes, so what I started to do is I started to memorize the Bible, and then I would touch muscle memory, touch a, a part of my body, and I remember a verse. So if there was physical temptation, I could touch it. If there was anger issues, I could touch a part of it, and I would know what the word of God said. And that was just a military person reacting in the way that was normal for him to react and to memorize the Bible so it would help him do life. And it would help him not to sin. You know, I, I write this in all my Bibles. It's written in this manual also. It says, this book will either keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. This book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. That's it. You either make time for it or you don't. It's either important to you or you don't care. Most of the time we don't want to know what truth has to say because then, doggone it, we might have to be mature and be responsible and do what it says. And I'm too daggone selfish to do what the Word of God says. I just want to do what I want to do. In a few weeks... Next week, matter of fact, we're going to uh, install all the new deacons that have been in the bulletin that have been on their list. I had a talk with those men over here on the side uh, uh, about four weeks ago, and there were some instructions that we gave them. We wanted them to be obedient to the word of God. As leaders of this ministry, they gotta be, they got to have skin in the game, so they have to financially step up to the plate, and they, start, they have to, to actually give. And all these things, and we go, this is the word of God, now you've got to put it in the practice. And if you're going to be a leader, you, you don't get to waffle on that issue. You have to do it. It's all about you and the Lord and being obedient to this. And if you're going to lead people, you can never tell or ask somebody to do something that you aren't willing to do, right? Amen? You know, you, do you want somebody to be handling your money that you gave to God and they don't? No, me either. So, you need to know the word of God. I have hidden the word. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin. And there's purpose. You know the word of God. You memorize it and you treasure it so you don't sin. So the word of God in Deuteronomy tells us that he gives his life. It tells us in Psalms 119 that it is a treasure. And then if you turn over, I think you'll probably have to because it's a verse 105. It says this. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet, a light to my path. This word, this is, a, this is a lamp. Now, I want you to think historically back. They didn't have LEDs. 205, 2500 BC. They didn't have LED lights. They didn't, they didn't even have incandescent lights. They had candle power. Like one. So when the psalmist wrote this verse, you know, because what we want the word of God to do today, we want, us, we want them to light up like high beams. We want to see our life for the next 10 years and go, oh, this is good. I know God, this is going to be so good. Look at my life. Woohoo! And uh, that's not it. You know, because I think God says it's a journey and every step can be a gas. Every step is going to be a good time, or you could fall. But here's the deal. While you're walking through the shadows and the valleys of life, you're either going to have a little candle, which is the word of God light, and you're going to look down and go, oh, this is where I'm going to step. Oh, this is where I step. This is where I step. This is where I step. Because it's just enough light to guide you one step at a time. God does not give you the whole picture. We wish he did. When a loved one had cancer, we go, I wish I knew. Uh, when Lindsay got diagnosed with MS, we go, man, we wish we'd have known this ahead of time. We wish we know what's going to happen in 10 years. But it's not that way. Thy word is a lamp. It's a candle. 
and to my feet. It's, it's that light that guides my path. And listen, if you don't know it, if you don't treasure it, maybe you're walking in the wrong direction. Maybe you're ready to step off a cliff. Maybe you're following somebody and, it, and it's not really the light. Let's go to the book of Joshua. Joshua is the uh, new leader. He's taken over the job for, for Moses. And um, it, it says, so Moses came to Joshua, son of Nun. And uh, Joshua is, is, is taken over. He's, he's, he's the man. Uh, and, and he's been taught by Moses how to lead. And this is some of God's instructions to him. And this is God's instructions to you and I. Because what I want you to leave with today is I want you to remember how important it is to know the Word of God. That it is light, that it is life, that it is treasure. And then for me, I need purpose. How many of you guys need purpose in your life? Oh, I need purpose. You know, uh, I never got good grades in school until I was bribed by my parents. My mom would say, honey, if you would work as hard at getting out of work and just do it, you, it'd be done so fast, it'd be amazing. You're, you're brilliant. And I go, I am? Yes, you're brilliant. And then finally they go, they must have been laying in bed one night, and they go, how are we going to get Ken to get good grades? And my dad said, well, let's, let's you know, he'd like a, a, a go-kart. Let's tell him if he get all his A's and B's, we'll get him a go-kart. So they did. They said, honey, if you get all A's and B's, we'll get you that racing go-kart. I'm like, really? They, yeah. I go, you're not lying. No, we're not lying. I was a freshman in high school. I go, all right. Shoot, next time I report card got, I got all A's and B's. They didn't ask me if I cheated or anything, but I'm telling you what, I had all A's and B's. And I guarantee, now I know I'm a parent, and I had kids that we wondered if they were going to make it. I didn't care how they got A's and B's. They got A's and B's. I wanted to slap that, you know, thing on my bumper. My kid's an honor roll student. You know, I, I, I like to run into those people. I have arrogance, sons of guns. Anyways, uh, I got all A's and B's. I always needed to have purpose, you know, take out the trash. Why? If not, I'm going to smack you. Okay, I'll take out the trash. It's the way God made me, and I think that's the way God made a lot of us. You know, have a good life. Well, how are you going to have? Well, know the word of God. What's the, what's the upside? You will live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, and, and you guys know enough people who don't live, or they think they're living, and they're just living in muck and mire of life. So I want you to understand that knowing the word of God, studying it, knowing that it's life, that it's a treasure, that's a lamp, and this is why. Joshua, chapter 1, starting at verse 6. This is what God tells Joshua. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their answers I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions, instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them turning either to the right or to the left, then you will be successful. Then you will be successful in everything you do. How many of you guys get up in the morning and go, I want to just be a failure today? I, can, I, I hope I get fired. I want to, oh yeah, <laughs> some of you people hate your job. Okay, I see that, you know. <laughs> I really do want to get fired. I've been trying to get fired and I can't. Um, you know, if you're a true-blooded red blooded American person we dig success that's all there is to it we just dig success and but we we I, I can't define success for all of you I, I don't even know sometimes what it is for me but I know this he says then you will be successful in everything you do so don't deviate from the turning either to the right or to the left know this manual know this book it gives you life it's a treasure if you, it's a light, and then, and then he goes on, and, and, and he says this, verse 8. Study this book of instructions continually. Meditate on it day and night so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you be, only then will you prosper and succeed. Only then will you prosper and succeed in everything you do. 
I guarantee that your friends who are far from God do not believe that if you obey this, you will be successful and you will prosper. Now, listen, we don't teach the name it, claim it gospel here. You know, my wife, stand up, sweetheart, please. You look beautiful today. Just stand up. Go on. Come on. Just, just for a second. You're a gorgeous woman. All right. Thanks, love. You can have a seat. Now, if you notice, my wife does not have poofy hair. Just saying. She doesn't have, like, super blue eyes. Just, she's just a gorgeous woman. So we're not the name and claim it. Hallelujah, got to have it. You know, if you're not driving a Cadillac, you're going to hell. Uh, I let Joe, is Joe England here? I thought I saw him earlier. Joe, I let Joe listen to the CD, and I listened to it. And, and the guy goes, you know, he goes, I just want to be a part of a church that has crazy good worship. They love God. They sing hallelujah, but they're not wackos. And I go, yeah. You know, and... Uh, where the pastor doesn't wear a bright suit every Sunday. I don't. I'm thinking about wearing more suits, though, because somebody's got to class up the place. I'm thinking about it. And, uh, and then it said, and the, pastor ha- and the pastor doesn't have a sports car or a little dog. And I go, shoot, I got a little dog and a sports car. Basically, what he was saying, we don't want to be fake. We want you to know this word, the word of God. We want you to know that it it gives you life. That it'll give you guidance, which is light. We want you to treasure it, memorize it, so you won't sin. So you won't sin, so you won't go down those wrong paths. We want you to put it into practice so people can't say, oh, you, you don't know what the word of God says? So you know what the word of God says. And the most important, because... Without it, you will never know prosperity. You won't know what success even looks like. Know this. Know that God has given this to you and I to have life. Well, they're having a good time in the foyer, so I think we should probably wrap it up. Brian, why don't you come on up and close us in prayer. Quiet down out there. Okay, how many of you guys have these? Come on, raise your hand. Okay, how many of you guys have used these to walk around at night? Where you just hit the little button, right? And it'll, it'll come on, you have to unlock it. Um, but if you just hit the button, it's bright enough for like 15 seconds, I think. And so I, this is how I go around my house. I go, and then I hit the button again, right? And, and as soon as it goes out, you've got to hit the button again. The easy way would be to, like, unlock it and put my password in and then hit the app, right? And so on these new iPhones, you can get the light. You guys got the light? All right. A lot of phones have the light. It takes a little bit more work, though. It takes a little bit more concentration to get the light that stays on. You can't just fake it. You can't just keep hitting the button and hoping that when you show up on Sundays and you talk to a few people once a week that the light's going to stay on. It might get you through Monday. (laughs) It might get you through Monday, but if you get into this word, if you open it up and you hit the unlock button and you read it, the light's going to stay on and you can just power through. Every time that thing goes off while I'm trying to get to the bathroom, we're in a new home, so I, I hit stuff. I run into things. I don't really succeed at getting there. I may have a few embarrassing stories that I am not sharing up here if you guys would like to hear about. (laughs) Lindsay, right? (laughs) Take the time. Unlock it. And stand. Grab the sweaty palm of the person next to you. Don't forget, we got a ton of stuff going on here. We're so excited of the growth and excitement and, 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 and what God's doing in this ministry. See Zach and Amanda if you want to help out at the rescue mission. Go back to the, the cornerstone table and sign up for the ladies' retreat. And uh, you can also uh, be here Friday for Richie's autism uh, benefit. Man, get excited. Be with us. Let's pray. Lord, we love you so, so, so much. 
We're thankful for today, uh, even even loud noises in the foyer, Lord. I just pray that, that your blessing that you've given us in here, it's been everywhere in this building with the nursery, with the promised land. Lord, we thank you so much for all the volunteers that make everything go so smoothly. And uh, we just pray that, that, Lord, we can unlock your word. We can remember how to, to, to put it in our pockets, that, that when those emergency situations come up, Lord, that you are our first reaction, not running back to our old life, but to our new life, Lord. We thank you so much. We leave everything at the foot of the cross, the most level playing field there is, and, and we ask it all in your son's name. And everybody said, amen.